Lesson R. Introduction to cell. Discovery of cell. Number of cells. Shape and size of cells. Parts of a cell where we will discuss cell membrane, cytoplasm and nucleus. And finally plant cell versus animal cell. So what is cell? Have you ever heard the word cell or have you ever used it literally while talking to somebody? So cell is, one cell is your cell phone. So that is something which I'm sure all of you are aware of. What is the other cell, the word cell, what does it mean? It means a room, you can say, or a small block. For example, you would have heard uh, the cells inside a prison. So inside a prison, there are small, the entire prison is divided into small blocks. And each block is occupied by a prisoner. So that each block is called as a cell. So cell is like a compartment. So you can say it is a compartment. Now when it comes to living organisms, what is a cell? It is the building block of all living organisms. Now what do we mean by building block of living organisms? Now just think of a building. So any building which you see, how is that building made of? I mean, how is the building getting constructed? Do you think that one fine day uh, you decide that, okay, I want to construct a house and that house should have two rooms, it should have one balcony, it should have one kitchen and etc, etc. So what happens? So you just think it and the next day do you have a house? Not really. So then you need to plan the design of the house and then the house needs to be constructed and how the house gets constructed with the help of bricks so each brick they are like blocks and all the bricks or all the blocks together construct the entire building so we can say that bricks are the building blocks of these house or of this building so in a very similar way, when we talk about living organisms, whether it is human being or it is a dolphin or it is a huge elephant or a bird or even the plants which we see around us, all of these are living organisms. So they are also made up of something and that basic unit or that something is nothing but a cell. Now, quite interesting, like you, you can just very Clearly, you can imagine cell as the brick. So cells are the brick. That means multiple cells together constitute the body of the human beings. Now, what we have to see is what exactly is cell? I mean, how, how does it look like and how exactly it performs so many different activities. So we are going to talk about all that. So the cell exactly is actually a very vast subject. I mean, there are very deep, very many details which can be discussed. But here we will just talk about the basics of cell because further details will be taught to you in your higher classes. So let us now try to define what is a cell. A cell is the structural and functional unit of life. So what do we mean by structural unit and functional unit? When I say structural unit, that means the structure of a living organism is basically made up of cells. So many cells together constitute the structure of a human being. It constitutes the structure of a plant or any other organism. When I say functional unit, I mean that all the functions that are produced by, that are being done by a living organism. For example, human beings, we, uh, the, the, inside our body, so many Many activities take place for example digestion takes place excretion takes place respiration takes place circulation takes place so many processes happen inside our body so how those activities happen how these functions are being performed by a living organisms so there also the basic unit is the cell so cells actually perform all these functions and that is how the entire that is why the entire body performs those functions. So cells are the structural as well as functional unit of every living organism. So it is very similar to the bricks. So here multiple bricks constitute a building and here multiple cells constitute a living organism. Well, it is not always necessary that in, inside a living organism there has to be multiple cells. Now gradually we will talk about the number of cells as well. So that time it will become clear to you. 
So now the question is, how was the cell discovered? So there is a very interesting story behind the discovery of cell. So let us quickly have a look at that. So what happened was there was a scientist named Robert Hooke. So Robert Hooke around 1665 he discovered cell. So he was the first one to discover cell. Now here also there is a very interesting story behind this discovery by Robert Hooke. Somewhere around 1661 King Charles II of England he asked Sir Christopher Wren to make a series of microscopical studies. So he wanted Sir Christopher Wren to make a note of or to make a detail of microscopical studies that is using a microscope he should observe the tiny objects and then he should uh, prepare a detail of what he has observed with the help of the microscope. But unfortunately what happened was, uh, I mean we can say fortunately or unfortunately that Sir Christopher Wren was quite busy and he did not have time. So he handed it over to an upcoming scientist, Robert Hooke. At that time, he was around 26 years old, so he was quite young. Now, Robert Hooke was, uh, I mean, very much interested in doing this. Now, while doing this microscopical studies, I mean, all he was supposed to do was, he was just supposed to observe various objects using microscopes and then pen down all the details or all his observations. So, that was the only job he was assigned to. But he was very much interested in doing this and he put in a lot of technical efforts. And that's how he designed a self-designed microscope. So he designed a microscope himself and with the help of that microscope where in which he tried to improve the efficiency of the microscope. Now how do, how do we say that a microscope is more efficient than the other? When the microscope has a greater magnification that is it, it, it helps you to see even smaller objects. So then we say that the microscope is more efficient. So he put in a lot of technical efforts, he worked on the microscope and he improved the efficiency of the microscope and out of his own interest he observed various other objects, he observed, he observed a large number of objects. So this, this is how the uh, self-designed microscope of Robert Hooke looked like, so some, somewhat like this. So what he did was out of his own interest once he observed the cork, cork is nothing but the bark of a living tree. So bark of a once living tree, a, live, a tree which was living at once. So when the tree dies then the bark is, this is how the bark looks like. So this is a cork. So he tried to observe this cork under the self-designed microscope and then what did he found? So this is how the cork looked like. So this cork you can see here. And then he observed on viewing the thin cutting of cork, he discovered there are empty spaces contained by the walls. So he took a very thin slice of this cork, a very thin slice was taken and then this slice was observed using this microscope and then he observed that it, it was like a honeycomb structure. So there were empty spaces which were uh, surrounded by walls. Now cork was basically a dead tissue because it was a part bark of a tree which was once living. So that time it was dead. So what Hooke observed was actually the empty cell walls of the dead plant tissue. So as he observed something of this sort which resembled a honeycomb structure. So if you see here, this is how it looked like. So here you see something like this, like this. So if you feel as if the inside space is empty and it is surrounded by some walls. So actually it was nothing but these empty spaces. There are nothing but the cells and outside were the cell walls. Now since this cork was a dead tissue, so the cells were also dead. So it was like the empty spaces and the surroundings were the cell walls. So he not only experimented with this cork. Now this was the first thing that struck his mind. Now when he saw this, he wanted to understand what exactly are these empty spaces and what are these walls. So for that he experimented with many other cells which were living. So now he started observing living cells and then he concluded that every living organism is made up of such compartments.
So they were not empty spaces in living cells, but instead they were filled with some juice-like structure. So he said that all living organisms are made up of small, small compartments which are surrounded by walls and the compartment is filled with some juice. But for a dead tissue like the cord, it was all empty inside and we just had the walls outside. So this was his observation at the end of all his microscopical studies. Now, what did he call these compartments? Now for Hooke, they were these uh, spaces or these compartments were like small blocks of spaces and so many multiple blocks of spaces together formed the entire living organism. So he named these small rooms as cell because the word cell, it, 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 it was a Latin word. So cell was actually a Latin word and its meaning was small rooms. Now, because of the structure of the cells, so he named them, named it cell. And that's how the term cell was coined. But Hooke did not know anything about the internal structure of the cell. Why? Because in order to observe, the cell itself was so small. Do you think that we are able to see cell with our naked eye? No. Because Hooke was also able to see it with the help of the microscope whose efficiency he had increased. So on doing so much, he was at least able to see these compartments or these small rooms. And that's how he concluded that, okay, there are some compartment like structures inside every living organism and these compartments are called cells. Now, what was there inside that cell? If he wanted to see that, he needed even more powerful microscopes, which were not present during that time. Therefore, he could not know anything about the internal structure of the cell. However, Later, the internal parts of the cell were gradually discovered by different scientists because with time, better microscopes were available. So scientists would found new details and today we know the entire internal structure of a cell. So this is how cell was discovered and these spaces which uh, was observed by Robert Hooke, he termed them as cells. So this was quite interesting, right? Because it, it was the, this work of microscopical studies was assigned to somebody else, that is Sir Christopher Wren. And he gave handed it over to Robert Hooke and he ended up discovering cell. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.